Now let's look at a different situation. This graph looks different than our last example. Here we have a graph that if I drew a midline through the graph, I would see a graph with a varying sinusoidal axis. That tells me, since we have a varying sinusoidal axis, that we are dealing with the sum of two sinusoids with unequal periods. So now we just have to determine what those two sinusoids are. Well, one of the sinusoids will be the sketch of our sinusoidal axis, which we can see by its behavior that it's going to be a cosine graph, because it starts at a maximum drops and then returns to a maximum. And we also need to recognize that we are using x, so we're going to be in radians for this example. Our period goes from 0 to 10. So with a period of 10, that means our b value is going to be 2 pi over 10, or pi over 5. So we'll have the cosine of pi over 5 times x as my initial function. And its amplitude appears to be 4. For our second function, we're going to look at what's happening on the y-axis here. Because that will help us determine whether we're using a sine or a cosine for our second function. Now, we know that 4 cosine pi over 5x when x is 0 will be 4. So y1 of 0 is 4. If we check our actual function, the, the graph in blue, we see that on the y-axis, that function is equal to 4. So our blue function at 0 is also equal to 4. Now since I'm adding a second sinusoid to my first sinusoid, I must be adding a sinusoid that has a value of 0 on the y-axis. If we're going to create y1 plus y2 to create the blue graph. Well, of the two functions sine and cosine, the function that has a value of 0 on the y-axis is a sine function. So I know that y2 is going to be a sine function with some period and some amplitude. Let's go back to the graph. And here we see that we're bouncing up and down around that red line or red curve, by a value of approximately two units. So every time I am above or below, it appears to be about two units. So we're going to use two as the amplitude for our second function. Finally, we need to determine the period. We need to figure out just how much this particular sinusoid has been dilated. So we're going to count cycles again from the start of the red graphs period to the end of the red graphs period. And here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, 13, 14, 15, and 16. So I have 16 cycles within this already dilated 
red graph. So what that means is since I have 16 cycles inside the red, I must have a lot more cycles inside the normal period of 2 pi. So I take that 16 cycles and I multiply it by the dilation factor that I already had in my red graph, the pi over 5. So I'm going to take 16 and multiply by pi over 5 to get an ultimate dilation factor for the smaller graph. So that would tell me that my graph is now 2 sine 16 pi over 5 times x. Since this is the sum of two sinusoids, my final equation is 4 cosine pi over 5x plus 2 sine 16 pi over 5 times x. Let's recap what we've learned about the sums and products of sinusoids with unequal periods. If two sinusoids have greatly different periods, then adding the two sinusoids produces a function with a variable sinusoidal axis. For the sum of the two sinusoids, the first function with the longer period is determined by the equation for the varying sinusoidal axis, the midline through the curve. The second function is determined by the behavior on the y-axis. If the image intersects the varying sinusoidal axis on the y-axis when x equals 0, that second function is a sine function. If the image lies above the varying sinusoidal axis on the y-axis, when x equals 0, the second function is a cosine function, because we're adding additional values to the original midline. For the product of sinusoids, we produce a function with a variable amplitude. And that first function in the product, the one with the longer period, is determined by the equation for the envelope curve instead of the sinusoidal axis. The second function is determined by examining the mid-period symmetry of the function. If the function is symmetrical around the mid-period value of x, the first and second functions will be the same, either sine and sine or cosine and cosine. If the function is not symmetrical around the mid-period value of x, the functions will be different, sine and cosine, or cosine and sine. Let's see if we've answered all our questions. How do we sketch the graph of the sum of two sinusoids with unequal periods? Well, if we're sketching, sketching the graph of the sum, we look for critical points and add the values at those critical points. So we add the amplitude of one to the amplitude of the other, and we should end up with a graph with a varying sinusoidal axis. How do we sketch the graph of the product of two sinusoids with unequal periods? Here, we look for places where either function is at a minimum, a maximum, or zero. So every time we have a zero on either function, we'll have a zero on our product. And every time we multiply by one, we lie on the larger curve. And every time we have a value of negative one on our smaller function, we flip away from our original envelope curve. What distinguishing characteristics will each of these graphs have? Well, the, the product of two functions will produce a function with a variable amplitude. And the sum will produce a function with a variable sinusoidal axis. How do sinusoidal axes and symmetries help us determine the equation for the graph of a combination of sinusoids? Well, for, for a sum, we look at the y-axis behavior and the equation for the varying sinusoidal axis. 
And for a product, we look at the envelope curve behavior and the mid-period symmetry. Finally, what is the difference between composition of ordinates and harmonic analysis? Composition of ordinates is the sketching of a graph given the equations and the original sinusoids. And harmonic analysis is coming up with the equation given the graph.